Hey, welcome again. Well, one of my subscribers suggested that I make a mortar and pestle. So here it is. I'm always uh, welcoming suggestions because it's quite frankly, it gets more and more difficult to, to make things that would be entertaining. I mean, I always make bowls. So here it is. It's made out of ash. My first rodeo, my friends. So. Stay tuned and see how I made it. These things here, I made these just for this. And uh, anytime you're cutting something around, you want to put these wedges in on the back side to keep it from rolling on you. A lot of people make cradles. I, I like it this way. I just need to get that one out of the way so the saw don't hit it. And uh, see that way they can't, the saw can't catch it and roll on you. So let's, uh, let's cut this off and see what it looks like. So I found the easiest way to find center is to use one of these templates. I think you can buy them at Penn State or Woodcraft. Uh, I think they're pretty easy. They're, as usual, they're grossly overpriced. I think it's around 20 bucks. But here, you know, you like this. Here's an eight inch line, see, and it runs about the same all the way around. So what that tells me is that it's going to be relatively in balance. So you know, I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line around it. Don't really need one, but then that sort of lets me know what I'm shooting for. But I'm going to go ahead and do a six-inch, like we discussed. It means I got to take a lot of wood off. I'll go ahead and put a seven-inch one on, just for zooms. You guys have watched me a lot, you, you'll know I do it the same way every time. Creature of habit, I guess. I use a, uh, I use a step drill, and I come in here, you know, to my center point, and I drill me a hole. This. This is going to be some hard turning, my friends. I can tell just by the way that did. So I'll come here with this thing I made here, and I made it a little small, so what I did is I wrapped it in some tape till it threaded it in, and I put some, uh, some thin CA all over the tape, so now I've got a pretty permanent deal here, and what we're looking for is to come down here to that, and we'll find the center, there it is. Come on down till it almost lifts it up. There you go. There you are. Now you see, it won't go any direction. Good fit. So I'm going to use these uh, deck screws like I always use. And if I calculate it right, I ought to be dead center than I am. There we go. That, my friends, will not go anywhere, I don't believe. But I went ahead and whittled some of uh, some of it off because it was pretty bad out of balance. So it's better now. It's still a little heavy right there. I could fix that, but I don't think it's that bad. I've got it on the leaf, so uh, let's just see. Scoot back out of the way. It, I don't think it can go anywhere anyway, but what the hell, good habit to have, isn't it? Let's see what we got here. It don't look too bad. Check a little bit right here. Whoa! Bark going flying. I can run it at a thousand. That's where I like. To, that's where I like to whirl at. So now. I'm going to go get on YouTube and see what one of these things is supposed to look like. All right, I, I got on YouTube and I found one that's, uh, I don't know the name of the guy, but it's called the Muzz Shop, M-U-Z Shop. Uh, about a year old. I really liked it, so I give him credit for the design. So, let's roll. I've already turned it up. It'll do a thousand. And I'll give you three guesses as to what I'm going to use. So, let's have at it. We're a little way. I 
fig to start with, I'm not going to go real fast because this bark's going to be flying and I just soon not have as much velocity. So I'm at, I'm at 235, so let's just see what it does. I may change. Yeah, it seems like I'm having a hard time getting going today. I've been in the deer woods for most of a week, and, and this has just been sitting, been fiddling with other things. If you looked at my other channel, you, you'll see that, my alternate channel. And I, so anyway, let's get back after it. I wonder how deep that goes. I can, I can fill that hole. We get it cleaned up, and I'll show you what I got in mind. Get rid of all this uh, torn grain here. it in like that, some CA in it, a little bit, put some more in it, a little more CA in it, maybe I need to put some more in this bottle. This is the top up here. So it's going to come like a lip like that, and it's going to belly up like this, and it's going to come like this, down to here, like that. Something like that. That gives you an idea. Something like that, and then of course that'll be hollowed out down to about there. How's that? How's that look? That's the idea, my friends. All right, <clears throat> let's see if we can't shake this rascal.
This is an old uh, hacksaw uh, with some aircraft stainless steel safety wire on it. Works great as you just saw. Yeah. This is water based, so it's going to raise the grain a little bit, so I'll have to sand it again and then put some more on. So that's it for today's day, my friend. All right, good morning. Well, it uh, it survived the night, no cracks and uh, no warping. What a deal, huh? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use uh, these jaws here, uh, dovetail, and I'm gonna do a recess or mortise or expansion mode, whatever you wanna call it. But first, I'm gonna come in here and make this whole bottom. It's it's really square right now because it's cut all the saw, but I want to make it just a hair concaved. And then, then I'm going to do the recess because uh, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take the recess out later. I've already set these. So I'll set them just to the outside of that. You can see. So I'm going to turn this a little bit, this don't need to go too fast. And you want to come in here, you want to be like straight across. Okay, there you go. Should have done it, my friends. See what we got now. Like that. There you go. And we'll snug it up good here so we know we're good. Then we'll tighten it. Nice and slow, my friends. Get your pattern going. Pretty rotten in there. That one spot, but I think it's going to be all right.
I believe that's pretty much got it. Take it off, sand the bottom, see if we can't do a little laser. Then we'll build the pistol. All right, well, here's the here's the mortar part of it. I'll do the pistol uh, probably tomorrow. Only work about four, three or four hours, and then I quit. No need to get wore out. So there, there it is. I'm going to put a little more sealer on it. And, Set it up for tonight. I just went ahead and burned this in the bottom rather than mess with the laser. You can see it looks uh, looks presentable. I like it. I I didn't know how deep to make this. I did. I wouldn't think it want it to be very deep though. So that's why I left it there. And it's got it's, I left the weight on purpose too because you know I thought when you're doing this you didn't you know you didn't want it moving all around. But the bottom's real nice and smooth, and it's ash, so it ought to hold up. All right. All right, I got the mortar. Uh, sand it down, I'm getting ready to see if it'll buff up. So I'm going to add a little bit of this to this wheel. Last time I got, I got too much to it, and it, it, you know, it sort of wanted to gum up on me. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more judicious this time. Don't really know how to tell when I got enough. This has nothing but men wax sealer on it, guys. For you guys that uh, don't follow my channel. No oils, no lacquer, no shellac, no nothing. Just men wax sealer. It has, uh, let me think, uh, four coats, I think. Maybe five. Definitely four. All right, let's see what we got here. Call that puppy almost done. Put a little bit of mineral oil in there. I already sealed it, but I don't think it'll hurt nothing. Just a little now. Oops, probably too much. I always do that. But I'll let it sit and soak. Get the paper towel rub it around with. Give it a little bit more of a I guess food safety deal in here. All right. That's about all I'm going to do to that. That, my friends, is done. Let's move on to the pestle. All right, this is ash. We've got a big old crack right here, so I guess uh, I don't know how long that dang thing ought to be. Just hard to give myself some room to spare. Right about there looks good. All right, for you guys that uh, first timers or don't follow my channel. Anytime I do spindle work, I do the exact same thing. I take a one-inch forester bit, and I make me a place right here for the drive center. And I come at the other end, and I take a little step drill, and I drill me a place for the live center. It's just something I've always done. When I first started, I had a couple of them come out on me, and I don't like that. And then I take and do that to it. Nice and sharp. I believe I just sharpened it. So I'm going to come in here with this and oh, boy, let me do that again. It's nice and centered. And I'll get it right there. It's about. I'm going to go 
get on YouTube and see what a pistol's supposed to look like. All right, I think I got it figured out. Uh, now I've showed you how you know how to use something other than uh, my carbide. I'm going to go back to them. Something I don't have to sharpen. This uh, this ash wheel dull them in a heartbeat. I bet you money. Let's go back to this right here. Of wormy places in it there. There's one thing I like about this wide rest is uh, you can get it right up next to it because it lets you come back here a little bit, see? So you don't have to have so much hanging over the side. So I'm going I'm to start going in right into here, make this somewhat smaller, and then start doing this right here. So let's see what we got. Whirl it up, whirl it up, whirl it up, whirl it up, whirl it up. burn lines you have got to have a groove to start with and I always use a little quarter inch gouge to make them with it just to make them really easy to do like one two three and then probably two there nothing there I don't think so let's see what we got here maybe I'll do four yeah that'll work so let's put one right here I like to make them pretty deep in my hair. So I give them about the same. That would be a good dripper. There you go. Wait, I'm going to what the hell. Call them in the, call them in the mood. All right. I'm going to use the uh, disc sander, clean up the top and the bottom. A little hand sanding, maybe some more sealer. And this stuff will be done. Well, there you go, guys. All done. Here it is. I think it turned out pretty nice. Take a good look at it. I really like the way. When I filled that rotten hole right there, the way that turned out, I mean, that's just really nice looking. You can see. That's, a, that's the best way to do it. Well, one of the best ways, there's, a, there's a, always a lot of ways to do this stuff. So, there's my first mortar and pestle. Not too big a deal, but... Uh, Bottoms, it doesn't really flat, flat on there, but I think it's, I think the guy wanted to, or a person, they could sure crush some, some, something there. Probably a lot of drug addicts like to have that, crush their oxy in and snort them. I think that's what they do. 
Who knows? Anyway, there you are. Call your mom. Subscribe. And uh, don't forget to look at my other channel. I'm beginning to get some videos on it. I got two on it now. Getting ready to put a third one on it. It's all different subjects other than wood turning, so I didn't want to mix the two. But I do other things. This is not my entire life here. So, there you are. Call your mama, like I said. Tell your friends. Subscribe. And I will catch you on the rebound.